in the name of allah the most beneficent the merciful assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to our course cross culture communication and our today's topic is cross culture adaptation we will discuss a simple definition simply how can we define adaptation and what is cross cultural adaptation with some basic and core concepts related to this cross cultural adaptation we will discuss all in today's class so cross cultural adaptation First of all, we see there are many, many immigrants or refugees or temporary sojourns. Sojourns, uh, temporary sojourns being the people who go abroad for a short period of time and their duration of their stay is not very long, it's not very lengthy. So they go abroad for a short period of time to complete their task or whatever their responsibilities are over there. So we can see uh, many, many immigrants, refugees or temporary sojourns, they leave their home and they become migrant or they go abroad or they go uh, in foreign countries. So in this way, they have to encounter a new cultural environment so where they have to stay where they have to live with other community members so what sort of problems could be there if you have visited uh, abroad and if you have visited foreign countries maybe some of you have definitely so you may be familiar uh, about those problems, troubles and issues that could be arise over there when we are in foreign culture or when we are in alien culture. So although unique in indi individual circumstances, all new arrivals find themselves in the need of establishing and maintaining a relatively stable working relationship with the host environment. So uh, it means that when we uh, go abroad, so it's very unique what we can say is it's not very common thing that everything will be okay there will be issues there will be problems there will be troubles or maybe maybe we have to face a lot of difficulties related to our stay over there in foreign countries so if there everything is okay or there is no issue these are the unique examples unique cases Anyhow, we can say that the, in majority cases, we have to face a lot of difficulties during our stay in foreign countries. So millions of immigrants and refugees who change homes each year, seeking a new life away from their familiar home grounds in hopes of safety, in hopes of freedom, in hopes of economic betterment, or simply a more desirable environment in which to live and work. So, what we can say for our better future, for our better future, for safety, for safety, people go for asylum means they have some sort of uh, threats in their own land. They uh, their lives um, are not safe in their home country. In their own country or in their homeland so that's why they move and they go abroad to get safety or freedom or sometimes economic betterment and majority of the cases in our asian countries because here and the what we can say the unemployment is too much and we have least opportunities to start our business or there are many many financial issues and we want to improve our financial status so that's why we go abroad so that's maybe we can go over there we can work over there and we can earn a lot of money and we can give a bright and better future to our family members so these are the motives to go abroad and we can see and we can observe we can examine all these cases in us we have heard a lot of news about these cases so countless temporary surgeons relocate in a foreign land to serve as diplomats oh yes these are the other opportunities apart from those that we have discussed previously this, there are some better opportunities diplomats military or personal and other governmental intergovernmental and non-governmental agencies employees on overseas assignments along with 
missionaries and employees of multinational corporations. So these are the situations. In one more situation that is not uh, written in this slide, that is uh, people go for deputation. Yes, what is deputation? People go abroad for deputation. In the situation could be in this way: if you are having a government job in your own, own country, in your homeland, and you want on a deputation to another country so your job will be switched with that country if it means that the nature of the job will be same if you are doctor here you will be get able to get a job in a hospital as a doctor only if you are a lecturer here you will be able to get a job over there when you go on deputation you will be a lecturer or teacher or doctor engineer so what sort, what sort of nature you are doing a job here in the, your own land you will be able to get on deportation in foreign countries and the plus point of this going on a deportation is that that your job is safe you will get your salary here and a plus you will also be able to get a salary from that country where you are serving so it's also a uh, one more opportunities are very golden opportunities many people try to go on deputation apart from these uh, military personnel and other governmental intergovernmental or non-governmental agency employees so researchers professors and students visit and study at foreign academic institutions while individual accountants construction workers and uh, athletes, artists, musicians and writers find employment in foreign lands on their own and uh, construction workers or there are some other uh, opportunities in uh, what we can say in Arab countries mostly Pakistani we have maybe you also know ma many many Pakistani they are doing a job as a driver or truck driver or car driver it's very good job over there although in this uh, scenario of COVID-19 the situation has been changed but before this it was a very good job over there if you are not very well educated so you can get a license for uh, heavy heavy drive vehicles or light vehicles or whatever and you earn a lot of money from Arab countries as a driver also so these are the <laughs> some other opportunities or other cases where in the, uh, by which some people go abroad and earn a lot of money for their family adding to this list are the numerous domestic migrants who leave the familiar surroundings of their home subculture and resettle in a significantly different culture environment with the same such as Native Americans who leave a tribal home to pursue economic and professional aspirations in a large city. So it could also be there. Here in Pakistan, we can also see that the people of rural areas, there is a tendency and they are prone to migrate from rural areas to urban areas or from rural sites to urban or city sites. So it's good. it could also be a domestic migrant as well. Domestic, like it's a, what you, mean, you can say there are international flights, there are domestic flights. Domestic flights mean the flights that are in our own country within the cities, in our own country. As uh, international flights mean the flights that go um, outside the country. So likewise, domestic migrant is also people from one area people move or shift from one area to the other area or to the other uh, cities in the same country. So it's called domestic migrant. So in the process of crossing culture challenges, the very basis of who we are as a cultural being, this concept, we, as we are different from the aliens, people of the foreign countries or people of the alien land we are different one so this thing in this thing or by this process our understanding increases we get understanding of other people other cultures and we get new opportunities for new learning and growth so being uprooted from our home bring us understanding not only of the people and their culture in our new environment but of ourselves and our home culture also 
so while staying at home maybe may, there are many things regarding our culture or there are many things we don't realize but when we when we are in foreign land we realize those things that we ignore while staying at home while staying in our own country so when we see the difference because in our countries things are similar because uh, when we are staying in Punjab and all the majority of the Punjabi people dress in the same way or food, their lifestyle or food or eating habits almost uh, similar but when we cross the pro boundaries of our province and we go to other provinces people we see the different people we see the different lifestyle we see the different language likewise when we leave the boundaries of our own country and we go uh, abroad and we see over there there are a lot of dissimilar things there are many many different things people have a lifestyle people way of walking people way of talking and way of eating the many many differences we can't find out over there so it's also give us opportunity when we cross the boundaries of our country we get new learning and new understanding of new culture and of other people or other community members so although the tribulations or troubles or problems that can arise from crossing cultures are often staggering so these are the news we always heard the news uh, about the, uh, as uh, these days we also uh, witnessing or examining the new concept about the what was uh, George Floyd uh, about the George Floyd killing of the George Floyd by a police officer in America so what we can see uh, black lives matter is also is that these are the heartening situations or very sad news that we hear and it seems like when we stay over there we may be our more what we can say we have more and more chances to get understanding and get different things to know about all those things so these, these things are very heartening or very uh, shocking success stories are everywhere although despite of the fact there there are problems there are issues when we leave our country when we leave our boundaries of our homeland the problems are arises troubles and issues despite of the fact there are people staying over there they are living their life happily they don't have issues and they are living over there uh, more than 50 years 70 years or more sometimes three three generations they are staying over there and they are able to sustain to spend their life over there in foreign country in alien land so the both things we can see the positive and negative negative effect so despite or rather because of the hardships and uncertainty we undergo when we cross culture we gradually find ourselves uniquely privileged to define ourselves and others anew with clarity and insight that we could not have cultivated without leaving home so <clears throat> if we are staying in our home or we are staying throughout the life we are staying in our homeland so we will not be able to understand these new things or these new concepts or new about uh, knowing about new cultures so we will we'll, we'll not be able to get knowledge about those things until we have to leave our home until we have to leave our country this tendency of cross-culture adaptation uh, is in on increase and uh, in the beginning of 20th century it was investigated that in the United States uh, related to this country of United States a nation that throughout its, its history has dealt with the large and continuous arrival of immigrants and insurgents so we can also observe uh, here we was someone apply for uh, American visa for immigration for uh, United States it's, it's the process is very complicated because there are numerous people many very large number of the people they want to go to USA that's why they have changed their policy especially after 9-11 the visa policy has been changed and because of the more and more numbers of the population throughout the world the 
the wanting of the USA. So it was investigated in the start of the 20th century. And as the total population, total immigrant population of the world is 244 million. According to the census of 2015, 47 million immigrants are staying in the United States of America, USA. And it indicates that the total population of USA, 19.1 immigrants are over there that are staying for a job purpose or for a business purpose or for a permanent residence. They are staying over there. So apart from America, there are some other countries that, that we can say Australia, Canada, England, Germany, Israel, and Sweden. There are different countries. And uh, China as well. Yes, there are scholarships available for students, in many, many students. Uh, if, if they can't afford or if they are unable to get visa for USA, UK, or Australia, so they want to become a student or they want to get a scholarship from China and China is very uh, what we can say uh, very welcoming in this situation welcoming to the students especially in the people uh, so students avail the chances of scholarship and getting to higher studies over there especially for master level or PhD level so uh, what we can say uh, but if, uh, as compared to all these countries, America is the top number and the tendency and inclination of the people moving towards foreign countries, America is the top of the list. So what cultural adaptation is? Cultural adaptation involves the reviewing and changing the structure of a program or practice to more appropriately fit the needs and preferences of a particular cultural group or community. Cultural adaptation involves modifications to service delivery or modifications to context, structure and practice to meet the particular language, communication, geographical, social and other needs of the population of focus. Population of focus means uh, where we are staying over there at, the, at that particular period of time or would mean host community. So we can communicate with that host community, members of host community in a better way, in a very effective way. So that's why we made some sort of modification, we made, made some sort of changes. So the resettlers, uh, they try, they always try to carry out their daily activities in the host environment as they, there, is a, there is demand, according to the demand, they try to behave in that way or they try to do their daily, daily activities in, in the same way as they are observing over there, they are examining by the host community members. So they find that many of the habitual behavior useful in the old setting may prove ineffectual in the new setting. So every relatively short time, short term temporary surgeons are at least minimally concerned with building a level of proficiency in the host culture and that's necessary for their daily functioning. So they they are least concerned they don't take botheration that we need to change because they think we are here for a short period of time we have to fulfill our activities we have to fulfill our assignments or what the whatever the job nature of the job is after completion of our job we need to go back so there's no need to change to bring change in our actions or behaviors and to make very fit with the first community but sometimes that's why they are have to face uh, sometimes uh, problems and issues uh, here I also want to give some uh, uh, one other example uh, one of my friend during my stay in Malaysia and uh, because over there we used to ride motorbike can you imagine that here in Pakistan we can see very few examples, very few ladies that who are riding a motorbike. But over there it's a common, it's a, it's a not unusual, it's a very usual thing. So how many men, men or how many male members they are driving motorbike over there on the roads? We can see with the same numbers, almost more than male members, females 
and female members of the community they are riding motorbikes and it's not seems awkward so i and my friends also we had to use motorbike over there we have to ride on the motorbike so one of my friend she was say going i think she was going to the nearby town what was the name of the town changlun yes in university of kara malaysia it was a uh, far away from our campus you know very far away at least half an hour drive from the by the motorbike so she was going over there and there is a trend to take helmet not only it's compulsory it's a must for the driver but how many members approximately to not more than two uh, here as we can see five members or five people are sitting over there on the motorbike but over there we can't see more than three yeah and three is in very least cases um, usually or in a routine wise only two members sit over there on the motorbike so she was going with the, her daughter and she was wearing the helmet but her daughter was at that time five or six years old she was not wearing the helmet and the traffic uh, police had stopped her, her and made chalan of uh, i think at that time 70 ringgit and 35 rupees per ringgit you can estimate how much she had to pay for because she was wearing the helmet and her daughter was not who was sitting behind her she was uh, her daughter was not wearing helmet that's why she was um, she was uh, made penalty by the police officer of 70 ringgit at that time so that's why we think that we are here for temporary period of time so we don't want to change we don't need to change but we if whether we are staying over there for short period of time or long period of time we have to follow the activities that are very compulsory that are very you know, that at any cost that we have to change we have to uh, we need to bring change among uh, us in that regard otherwise we have to face a lot of problems and issues the degree to which individuals undergo such cross cultural challenges varies widely depending on the situation involving international migration and motives for relocating to another culture different reasons for crossing cultural company different degrees of com commitment one feels towards the new environment abrupt and involuntary moves for instance are typically experienced by refugees who are who, whose life is at very uh, risk and they are not uh, but we can say they are not safe in their own countries so abruptly immediately without any plan they move to towards other countries when they leave their own country they leave their own homeland owing to certain nature of their departure so have little chance to prepare themselves for life in the host country because they have moved in a very immediate way quick way or without any plan so that's why they they have to maybe there are more clashes or more issues as compared to other people who have pre planned strategies or who have I mean, thought, thought enough before departure Uh, before their departure from their homeland so at least during the initial phase they may suffer from a severe psychological dislocation and sense of loss so sometimes the, this situation become very critical so we need to uh, focus or emphasize these points also in our while we are studying cross cultural adaptation we can also define cross cultural adaptation in this way one's ability to communicate in accordance to the norms and practices of the host culture and continuous and active engagement in the interpersonal and mass communication activities of the host society kim's theory of the big picture a broadly based on based in systematic insight into what happens over time when someone crosses cultural boundaries and what factors facilitate or impede or become hindrances his or her adaptation to the host culture he has highlighted the different issues related to cross cultural adaptations there are some core terms in the cross cultural adaptation there are three main terms acculturation integration and assimilation acculturation what acculturation is to 
change to bring change some sort of change in behaving or dealing with other people coping and adjustments are terms of use to indicate the psychological responses to cross culture in which we can say acculturation so what we can say here that uh, if a family moves towards a foreign country australia new zealand uk or usa or you know some less uh, least advanced countries malaysia or even some other countries like that so if the, for the first time when they encounter the community members they want to bring change some sort of change using uh, vocabulary using some sort of particular language or very adjustable language or they dealing with other people they modify their, some to some extent they modify or in the, it is the initial level of the cross culture adaptation with the passage of time when they spent i'm talking about i'm giving the example of a family who moved towards those country those advanced countries so after some time or few after few years maybe after 10 years or maybe 5 to 10 years time they they what we can say they start to more advanced to go to more advanced so it was a culturation was the uh, initial level a changing and modification of the different uh, things related to behavior or dealing with the people or interaction with the people integration in the second phase or is the it is the more advanced as compared to a culturation so now after 5 to 10 years say the family that particular family is more familiar with the things or what we can say and, and willingly or unwillingly there are some sort of more changes because of staying over there continue staying over there there are more changes so it is a integration point or integration phase number third one is maybe after the the next generation of that particular family and after staying of 30 years or 40 years almost there are complete not completely but around complete or least to most so most changes could be find out over there and uh, it indicates a more comprehensive and a psychological social and cultural change we are by individuals become mainstreamed into the whole society so maybe it is willingly or unwillingly but the thing that is we need to ponder over we need to consider there over there the short stay is okay the short or least changes are okay and to some modifications in our behavior our dealing our interactions or we integrate some sort of things it's okay the assimilation it's not okay to completely or more and more complete but again to change it's not welcoming or in in this way after 30 years or after 40 years or after the next generation that enter in this phase of assimilation crossing over the acculturation integration in the last stage the maybe to some extent it's a very but we can say it's not very bad but to some extent if we have changed all of the things have been changed our lifestyle our uh, actions of dealing with other people interaction interacting with other people or the main thing is that it's also okay a culturation uh, what sorry, oh, sorry cultural change could be social and cultural change psychological so when we change all of the things you know, all the core things are related to our religious related to our iman or related to our sharia or related to our core dress or is in everything if we have changed so we will be able to i think we will not be able to sustain our own identity in this way we will lose our identity being a pakistani being a muslim or being a different a different 
members of a different community will be lost. So I think, in my opinion, it must be avoided a completely change, complete change of the things. Acculturation, integration, it's okay. But assimilation, we must be careful. We must say people you know, automatically, a person is staying over there with, for 30 years or 40 years or from one generation to next or next to third generation. The acculturation, assimilation process is more strong. Is more stronger, or that's why some families, who, when their children are become adult, and they especially uh, regarding the upbringing of their daughters, mostly families, they worried, and they wanted to come back because they want to sustain some basic and core traditions and norms and some basic concepts of their religion, Sharia, and their community. So that's why they mostly, uh, not mostly, but many, many parents and families, they want to come back and they want to bring back to their children so that they could sustain their own identity, being a Pakistani or being, being Muslims. So that's why they want to come back. At the core of this growth conception of cross-cultural adaptation is the goal of achieving an overall fit between an individual culture of strangers, internal conditions, and the conditions of the host environment for maximization of his or her life chances. So the core thing, the main thing, the essence of this cross-cultural adaptation, the purpose of this cross-cultural adaptation is to become adjustable, to become adjustable with the host community so that as he or she can maximize of uh, what we can say expand their routines or expand their activities towards the host community regarding cross culture adaptation the one thing the main thing the role of the stress is also very important Stress, a kind of identity conflict rooted in resistance to change and the intensive desire to retain old habits in keeping with the original identity on the one hand and the necessity to change behavior in seeking harmony with the new setting on the other. So this internal conflict is essentially between the need for acculturation and the resistance to deculturations that is the push of the new culture and the pull of the old. So there is a tussle between the old culture and the, between the new culture. So push of the new culture and pull of the old one. So there is a most of people, they don't want to leave their old habits, they don't want to change themselves while staying at the host community and sometimes there is a demand, there is a requirement and there is a, you know, what we can say, it's a demand of the time and demand of the society, your locality, your community, there must be some sort of change. So this tussle, so this confliction between uh, sustaining or maintaining the old habits or changing of the new or uh, what we can say the uh, change of the new habits or change of the new things it's continuous Kim has presented a cross-culture adaptation theory in terms of stress adaptation growth dynamic and psychological movement in the forward and upward direction of increased chances of success in a changing or changed environment. So we will discuss this model later on. The stress adaptation growth dynamic model stress as such in a manifestation of the universal process that occurs whenever the capabilities of the individual are not adequate to the demands of the environment. So stress is a direct function of the lack of fitness between the stranger's subjective experience and the prevailing modes of experiences among the natives.
Stress adaptation growth transformation process continues as long as there are new challenges of contact and communication with the host environment. The overall forward and upward movement in the direction of greater adaptation and growth. See the model. Here we can see the cyclic dynamic model for stress adaptation growth and it's called also a process model. Here you can see on the right Sorry, on the left side you can see there are two main things. Number one is there adapt the stress, the downward, and then number two is adaptation. So there are these two main things: stress and adaptation. How much stress we will have? The least adaptation would be over there. You can see here are the, the cyclic process is starting when they, these circles or half circles are downwards it means there are more stress we have and gradually the passage of time when we are have crossed the phase of acculturation and we are in the middle we are going towards up towards the adaptation in the least stress and the more adaptation in the next we can see in the phase of when we are in the phase of assimilation after crossing the acculturation after crossing the integration phase we are enter in the assimilation process so this we can see adaptation in this cyclic procedure here we can say upward towards the adaptation here you can see it's a growth over time so this is the model we can say how much stress we would be have the least adaptation there would be and with the passage of time when we will be able to release that stress we are more comfortable we are more adjustable in the host community we are we are moving towards the process of adaptation and we are leaving the process of stress and we are leaving the phase of stress we are moving towards the adaptation so this is the chem model stress adaptation growth dynamic model hopefully you will be able to understand Generic representation of the present articulation of the interrelationships among stress, adaptation, and growth. Strangers respond to each stressful experience by drawing back, which in turn activates adaptive energy to help them recognize themselves and leap forward. So, as we have discussed in our previous slides, under this. Let's see this model. It's also a, a process model. And here you can see there's a little slight difference from previous one. This is 4.3 and in, in this 4.4 we can see a slight difference over there. Here you can see also there are two things. Stress and adaptation. Adaptation is here or stress is uh, downwards. It's a growth over time the process or the model is related to growth over time growth over time or uh, related to stress and adaptation of the people who go abroad who stay over there in foreign countries and the so, so related to stress level and the level of adaptation so it's a diminishing <coughs> stress <coughs> adaptation growth fluctuation over time so with the passage of time as uh, family as individuals or persons stay in foreign land in foreign countries stress level in the start we can see a stress level how much stress level is there but with the passage of time it again uh, we are uh, we can say the releasing this stress pattern or releasing this stress level and finally here we can see in this model it's totally upward from this growth level or growth over time from this level it's a totally to the, towards the adaptation and the line or the what we can say the line uh, between these two adaptation and stress functions we can see the uh, it's cross the boundaries of the, this line so it's upward towards the adaptation no stress totally adaptation so it's, we can say it's a totally 
adopting or it's a totally the in the phase entering in the phase of last stage what we can say discuss is assimilation so the last days no really uh, sorry no stress or totally release of the stress and uh, totally adaptation or carefree life over there we can say that not all individuals are equally successful in making transition transition change a temporary change that comes in the lives of the individuals or human beings not all individuals are capable to maintain or sustain that transitional period so many of them they are too much worried they want to run away from that host community and they because they had lot of issues so they have issues with the food they have issues with the language they have issues with the sometimes uh, even sometimes with the grocery we cannot find in some places we cannot find fresh vegetables as we leave our doorstep of our home and there are plenty of chances or plenty of uh, opportunities we can get fresh things or fresh fruit or fresh grocery or many many other things or the things are are very cheaper here but when we are staying over there we have to become a very what we can say financially we have to become very strong so for everything we have to pay here we have friends we have siblings we have relatives we have many many other colleagues they will assist us but over there we don't have a large community who will care care about us and who will take care of us so the life is not easier the life is not comfortable and majority not majority but many many people what we can say unable to sustain in the host community because of the many reasons so i have i could also remember some of our friends they came back and they could survive life over there uh, especially uh, two to three families and uh, their their children became sick and they sometimes individual students who couldn't survive over there who couldn't stay over there because of some food problems or but uh, other some issues they had to face so when a confronted with the indefinitely failure of their existing adaptive resources some individuals may experience a state of extreme panic causing serious and prolonged damage to their physique so they become too much disturbed and they they become too much dejected they want to stay over there and they want to do, want to come back to their country their own country they, they want to see their family members they are very sick to stay over there so that's why they could not continue their uh, activities or their studies or their jobs etc however i have also experienced or i have also observed many many things majority of the students were successful over there during my stay in malaysia very few of them very few of families or very few of individuals came back they could uh, survive uh, that um, their life in the host community